because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Razaban IFL TV proudly sponsored by Everlast. We are here in sunny Bournemouth. Ben, firstly, who, who got the date right? Which member of your team got this date right? Because they deserve a clap for making sure the weather is on point. This was meant to be our week as a team away. And it ended up Bournemouth and, and now we're treating it as a holiday. It's unbelievable. Last year, when we came for Isaac Chamberlain, I didn't think it could get much better than that. That was that was an incredible week on the beach and fight of the year, one of the fights of the year as well. To be here 12 months later, but now to be looking at an outdoor event at the stadium that sold how it is, it's, it's special. Everything's lined up and uh, Chris Bill and Smith has to now now do the business. We've, we've, we've done everything we can. We've had two shows last year. I think the first one sold two or three, second one sold, sold four. To be selling 15,000 tickets is uh, pretty special and it shows what British boxing can do with it. As a local hero, proper local fans behind them, involved in the football club. We've seen it with Josh Warrington and Ricky Hatton and they've created their legacies now. Ricky Hatton in Manchester, the boxing is still thriving off of what happened here and this is the biggest event ever to come from the South Coast for, for Chris Bill and Smith. This is, this is everything. Also your first outdoor event as well uh, in the UK? In the UK, I remember in Tirana in the summer with Florian Marku, which was, a, which was an experience. But yeah, it's been incredible. Look, Bournemouth had never done a show like this. Ever even done an outdoor on the pitch. So we've had to build it from scratch. Monumental team effort, licensing. Everyone's got involved, the council. Joe Ashford Ellis, who's who's been instrumental in investing down in Bournemouth, it's it's been a, it's been hard because boxing's just never existed down here, and we've had people from Salisbury, Portsmouth, Bournemouth, obviously Southampton. Everyone's coming on on Saturday night. It's a big event for the South Coast. I'm hoping that it's the start of very many, but yeah, it's been difficult and. Uh, First one for the football club as well. They're, they've had season tickets compl holders complaining about how many people are allowed to the event, and it's more than than what goes to a Premier League. So that just shows the the size of the event on Saturday night. And obviously, Lawrence Akoli being your latest signing uh, this year, but Billum Smith was someone that came from the zone and, and and matchroom to yourself to put on these events, but. Uh, in terms of the fight itself, every, every time I speak to anybody, everyone seems a bit split. They're not sure how it's going to go. Can it go early? Can, can Billum surprise him? Can Lawrence won't certainly surprise him with his power? C could it become uh, the threat of it becoming boring as well at the same time where they'll end up holding each other for two months? I was just spoken to Sugar Hill and he said that definitely isn't going to happen. Yeah, I spoke to Sugar Hill and he's determined. Like It hit Lawrence hard, what happened in March and the criticism. And that's why this is the perfect fight for him. And... Uh, yeah, Sugar's determined that this is going to be a proper fight and we're going to see a different Lawrence Okoli and uh, it's a perfect fight for him. It's a perfect fight for both of them. Chris Billingsmith gets his world title opportunity. Lawrence Okoli gets a chance to answer critics within seven weeks. We're going to see a proper fight. I think um, what's interesting is, is, is the McGuigan camp and the confidence they have and Shane doesn't mince his words. You know, We have a few fighters with him and he'll tell us exactly what level the fighters are and he, he's extremely confident with Saturday night. They know Lawrence Okoli really well but Similarly, Lawrence has done that many rounds in that many years and this is a voluntary defence that you'd think he knows what, what he's doing. So, um, yeah, it's a big fight. It's a, it's a narrative that we don't usually see. When we first signed these fighters, did I think they would ever fight each other? No, never. And so the, the fact that they've actually done it, got in the ring, and it's happened in seven weeks and they're selling out a stadium is special. But, yeah, I, I, I think on paper, Lawrence Okoli is the best cruiserweight in the world. But... If Chris Billings Smith's ever going to do it, it's this one because consistency and having the right trainer and having having a routine are so important in boxing. We see it so much. Lawrence has changed everything: country, trainer, manager, promoter, and he's got to go in there into the lion's den and fight against Chris Billings Smith for his lifetime opportunity. It takes balls on both sides, and uh, that's uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's tough to see which way it goes. Rumours that there might be a mole in Chris Billum's camp um, providing information to uh, Lawrence Okoli. Can you give us any further info on that? Do you know who the mole is? It might be Josh Pritchard, but I can't say <laughs> that. No. I think, to be honest, Lawrence has been there a long time. He's trained with all those guys. Um, 
and he's been involved with them a long time. So uh, he obviously knows knows the gym really well. But I think it's a bit of tongue in cheek. I think uh, they both know each other so well. They don't need moles. This is a this is two guys that probably know each other better than any other fighter. Like they they they've done more rounds than anyone else they've sparred. Chris Bill and Smith. What what you'd usually see is one fighter more that knows he's going to come out on top and more confident than the other, especially after that many rounds. But the fact that they're both so... Chris Billum smith was the one that asked for this fight. Lawrence and Coley accepted it within an instant. That that means there's something going on. Both of them extremely confident, and uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, disappointing, obviously. Uh, Mikhail Lawal had to pull out of the fight with Isaac Chamberlain, which was promised to be a good fight, as, as certainly as, as chief support. Yeah, it's gutting. I mean, to be honest, I don't know what truly happened it's, it's 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 difficult to see Isaac Chamberlain for me one of the most unlucky cruiserweights for Okoli the Okoli fight his career seemed to to sort of go off in a, in a tangent and he just went missing for a while then he comes back after four or six rounders and fights Chris Bill and Smith in his own town and, and gave an unbelievable account of himself he never seems to get the rub of the green and the right fight at the right time this probably was it but we'll get him out. He'll be out on a six-rounder, and then in the summer, I think he'll get his chance at the British. Um, but Pickford Eggerton is a is an absolute huge replacement for a chief support, especially with Joe Pickford and the home fans and Sam Eggerton fight of the year so many times. That is going to be absolute fireworks, and I think we'll probably be fight of the night. But I don't think a lot of people speak about this. But obviously, Chris Benham Smith was with a different promotional company match, and we know that with the zone, he didn't have those opportunities. He wanted to come here, and you've delivered him back to back to back to opportunities in his hometown so surely yourself your team must get credit for that yeah I think so but it's difficult because a lot of the fighters we're signing on are Chris Billum Smith's stage of their career and that's why look we we look at everything but we've had to build a stable in the past 18 months based on fighters that are either turning over debuting as I say, or or maybe a few fights in, and that takes a build, and that takes you can't you can't throw them in straight away. Now the stables get to the point where, you know, 75% of them are going to be fighting for titles in the next 12 months. That's where it gets exciting. But with people like Chris Bill and Smith, and the way we've delivered for them, I think, as I say, I look at the Adam Azims, I look at the Ben Whitakers, I look at the guys in our stable, and say that's how to build, build in your hometown build proper fan base we saw it with Anthony Joshua we've seen it with Josh Warrington we've seen it with Ricky Hatton who's the legacy still lives on in Manchester Chris Billings is creating a legacy right now in Bournemouth and that's what British boxing is about it's about having fans that you, you, you build over time, that you take the right fights at the right time and, and things can explode for you. And for Chris Bill and Smith to now be fighting in a stadium, never mind just in Bournemouth, that's what can happen in a very, very short space of time. So yeah, unbelievable achievement for, for ourselves, but equally him. And I think that's the way to go. We want to invest in localities. We want to go to Birmingham. We want to go to Newcastle. We want to go to Scotland, Bournemouth, biggest event ever on the South Coast. That's what British boxing is about. Moving away from the show, uh, Ben, obviously news has just broken. Um, Liam Smith as Chris Eubank Jr. to the rematch is off again. Um, just can you give us some more information on what's happened. Obviously, we know initially you moved the date because Liam had a little injury. But what's happened since and, and when can we expect the fight to happen? Look, it's been difficult because Liam's had his nagging back, back injury and he was convinced he'd be okay for July it will now be August and uh, it's, I feel sorry for both fighters both Liam both Chris frustrating for myself and Calla a lot of money a lot of promotion has gone into that fight but the, the show goes on Marshall Cruz is a big enough fight to headline any show in this country she now becomes the first woman to headline in uh, in both the two major arenas it's a huge car with Chelly Heffron on there and uh, and Boris Crichton now fights Callum Simpson who we have massive high hopes for Ben Whitaker on there Tasha Jonas defends the world's title so it's a, it's a huge night in itself Eubank Smith the rescheduled date will be announced next week but yeah, it's, 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 it's frustrating when, when that happens to anyone. Chris Eubank Jr. wants to avenge his defeat. We have a postponement clause, which is fine, and we have to postpone um, to a date within, the, within that clause. So the fight will happen, but I actually think the fighters want it to happen. Chris Eubank Jr. is desperate to avenge his defeat. Liam Smith wants the fight to happen. I know there's been a lot of rumours around medical evidence, but believe me, Liam Smith is a professional. Liam Smith has not pulled out of any fights throughout his career this fight will happen this fight I believe will happen in August and we'll be able to announce it next week but um, yeah just feel for the fighters and a feel for both of them but the good thing is the show continues and all the undercard fighters obviously Marshall goes as main event but everyone else stays on the card and those who have a ticket can keep the ticket for that show or ask for a refund 
Correct, and I think um, look, sometimes you see pay-per-view main events go and the whole show goes. This is a huge card nonetheless in July, on July 1st. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. I think it's a, it's a massive opportunity for Mark Heffron in his hometown against Zach Shelley. Huge, huge fight for him defending his British title. Obviously, Zach Shelley for us has worked his way up. Massive chance for Callum Simpson. Tasha Jonas finally is back and Ben Whitaker as well. But a huge night in Manchester Arena. Really thank all the partners that allowed us to keep the fight on. As I say, so many fights just fall away and uh, and we're hugely committed to it. Just final last one before I let you go. I know you've got to rush. Um, you announced Fraser Clark's opponent as a Marius Swag, someone who's a veteran in the game. Yeah. Some people have questioned, obviously, whether he's at the right stage of his creative fight, Fraser, but from Fraser's, Fraser's perspective and your perspective, it's, it's the right fight, good experience and getting ready for awarding maybe down the line. Correct, 100% the right fight and, uh, yeah, this is the one we wanted. This is the one that he needs for me and his development. It was never about, I know, it was never about promoters and broadcasters. If they were in the same stable, it wouldn't have been Fraser Clark's next fight. That's all this was. If it, if it, if it got ordered again for later in the year or we can make that fight in the later in the year, without a doubt, 100% we'll make that fight. There's an offer there. Um, but it was never about that. And uh, yeah, for me, this is a po- perfect fight. And I think most people in boxing understand this is the right fight for Fraser Clark. Ben, appreciate your time. We'll catch up with you tomorrow after the press conference. Cheers, cheers mate. Ben Chilom, IFL TV, thank you very much. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bounce is guilty. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 